Our gracious and most heavenly Father, we come before you at this time to offer our praise and our thanks for bringing us to this most auspicious occasion to mark the launch of the digitization project for Kaipo. Lord, we thank you for your sustenance, for your guidance, for your strength, for empowering each and every person who has had to play a part and a role in this process. We recognize, O oh Lord, it is from you that we have taken the talents that, was, that were necessary to be able to bring this to fruition. And Lord, we want to pray that those entities and government agencies, as well as our partners who have all played a role, that they will continue to be able to be of some benefit and use to Barbados as we move forward. These, this we ask in no other name, but the name of Jesus, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. A pleasant good morning to everyone. I am Tamar Grant, Acting Deputy Registrar of Intellectual Property at Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office. And this morning, I fulfill the role of Master of Ceremonies. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Ronald Toppin, Minister of International Business and Industry. Senator, the Honorable K. McConney, Minister of Innovation, Science and Smart Technology. Mr. Charlie Brown, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Innovation, Science and Smart Technology. Mrs. Jennifer Hunt, Acting Permanent Secretary, Ministry of International Business and Industry, Mr. Ben Arundel, Special Envoy and Advisor to the Government of Barbados, Mr. Kevin Hunt, Director of International Business and Industry, Ms. Priya Narain Singh, Representative from, sorry, Managing Partner, sorry, with Ernst and Young. Also here from Ernst & Young, Ms. Lisa Padmore and Mr. Colade Nurse, Senior, Senior Manager of Technology Consulting. We also welcome Mr. Derek Cummins, President of the Barbados International Business Association, Ms. Carmel Haynes, Executive Director of the Barbados International Business Association, Ms. Sandra Payne, Director, Research and Development in Vest Barbados, and Mrs. Tamisha Rochester, Acting, De Acting Registrar for Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property. Ms. Tricia Beckles, Legal Examiner, now Acting Deputy Registrar of at Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property other distinguished guests, members of the media, as well as our virtual guests and online viewers, ladies and gentlemen. All protocols having been established, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome each of you to the launch of Kaipo's digitalization project under the theme a symbol of transition to digital transformation. Today, the corporate registry of Kaipo moves from processing paper applications to a fully electronic system. This launch marks not only a major milestone for Kaipo, but signals a greater thrust for the modernization of our country, Barbados. Thus, it is only fitting that we should have today as our featured presenter, Prime Minister Motley, who has made the modernization of Barbados through the incorporation of technology a focal point of her administration. Without further ado, 
on behalf of the acting registrar and the staff of Kaipo, I once again extend a warm and sincere welcome to Prime Minister Motley and all of our distinguished guests. At this time, I call upon Mrs. Jennifer Hunt, permanent acting permanent secretary for the Ministry of International Business and Industry to deliver the opening remarks. Thank you, Madam MC. Honorable Mia Amor Motley, QC MP, Prime Minister. Honorable Ronald Topping, MP, Minister of International Business and Industry. Senator the Honorable Kay McConney, Minister of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology. Mr. Charlie Brown. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology. Mr. Ben Arundel, CBE, SCM, Special Envoy and Advisor to the Government of Barbados. Ms. Tamisha Rochester, Registrar Acting, Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property. Mr. Kevin Hunt, Director, International Business Unit. Ms. Tamar Grant, Deputy Registrar Acting, Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office and today's Master of Ceremonies. Ms. Tricia Beckles, Deputy Registrar, Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office. Technical Officers of Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office and of the Ministry of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology. Representatives of Consulting Partner, Ernst & Young. Specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Media and Sign Language Interpretation Services. Good morning. The pleasure is mine to deliver opening remarks at this, the launch of the first phase of the digitalization project of the Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office in Barbados. This launch symbolizes yet another important step in our country's transformation. It comes at a time of simultaneous upheaval, renewal, and recovery largely occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic, while not the reason for this change, has provided some impetus. It has released a whirlwind of challenges, while yet affording us many opportunities. We have been afforded the opportunity to re-energize our economy, our processes, and our thinking, to develop, transform, embrace change, embrace innovation, embrace smart technology, and commit to newer, easier, and better ways of doing business and citizen-to-state interactions. Kaipo, as a critical government department, must be on the cutting edge of service delivery and effective processes. Today, as we make our mark on history's page with expectations great, I invite your rapt attention to each presenter as we travel with them on the journey of digital transformation, firm craftsmen of our fate. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Mrs. Jennifer Hunt for her opening remarks. And we move now to invite the Honorable Ronald Topping, Minister of International Business and Industry, to deliver the minister's remarks.
Thank you, Madam Chair, Prime Minister, the Honorable Mayor Motley, Senator, the Honorable Kia McConney, Minister of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology, Prime Secretaries, Chairman, CEOs, and all other specially invited guests, members of the media, good morning to you all. It is with great pleasure, and that is not the usual cliche that you use when you start a speech by saying it gives me great pleasure. It really gives me <laughs> great pleasure this morning to welcome you to the launch of the going live phase of the digitalization of the corporate registry project. <laughs> Our journey to reach this point has not been an easy one. Over the past 20 months, we've seen for a sound the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. There's been disruption in our offices, our schools, our homes, our lives, and of course, right here at Kaipo as well. However, we've also seen a year and a half of learning to adjust and to adapt. We've had to be innovative and find new ways of doing things quickly, safely, and more efficiently. One of the things that the pandemic has taught us is to utilize digital technology to minimize disruption and allow for continuity of our day-to-day -day activities. It has shown that a technologically driven world is destined to be the new normal and that digital transformation is inevitable. As the Minister of International Business and Industry, I too have had to adjust and adapt departments and agencies under my purview towards a digital future a future grounded in robust digital infrastructure aimed at improving efficiency and effectiveness. And I'm proud to say that we are one step closer to realizing this goal with the launch of phase one of the Kaipo Digital Corporate Registry. As we are all well aware, practically all businesses and commercial activities commence in the corporate registry. For Barbados to be competitive as a jurisdiction of choice in the international business sector, and for, for international and local investments to abound, it is critical that a level of efficiency be attained in the corporate registry's operations. And when, when we say level of efficiency, we are referring to the significant reduction that is required in the timelines for the completion of the services presently being performed by Kaipo. Factors such as the ease with which companies can be incorporated and registered the time involved with the completion of all post-incorporation and registration transactions, as well as related matters for the setting up of, of businesses, business operations, all redound to an environment that is more conducive to doing business in Barbados and are of tremendous importance to potential investors and business persons. Even before COVID-19 impacted us, the transformation of the corporate registry of Kaipo was a critical part of my agenda to bring that office and indeed the entire ministry into the 21st century. This vision has been further fueled by the realization that we cannot return to our pre-COVID world and that we must acknowledge that business as usual has to take on a whole new meaning. So what does this all mean? The term digitalization in itself encompasses the utilization of innovation and technology to reap maximum productivity and efficiency. Digital transformation is an even broader term that signifies an overall business transformation that is driven by the needs of customers. It includes strategic organizational change alongside the implementation of digital technologies. So the digital transformation formally beginning today means that we have re-evaluated the things we do every day and the way that we do them. We have listened to the concerns and suggestions of our stakeholders, and that is the part where I mentioned at the beginning that I was really pleased today because the complaints, the concerns and suggestions of stakeholders really were, they were taking up a lot of my time, to be honest with you. So I'm very pleased, as I said earlier. So we've listened, we have rethought and re-envisioned what is possible and what is necessary, not only for us to have a competitive edge as a jurisdiction, but to ensure that our people the general public of Barbados have easy access to the services they require. To this end, 
Not only are we transforming the corporate registry, but in the area of international business, we are also implementing an IT, which should be in the international business unit. We are also implementing an IT-driven business licensing system software to re-engineer the licensing processes within the international business unit as well. Together, these measures will not only significantly improve the way we do business, but will also improve the country's overall economic performance. Over the last few months, the team at Kaipo has worked closely and tirelessly with the developers of the digital system, Ernst & Young, and with the Ministry of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology to implement a digital platform upon which companies and businesses can make their corporate filings and e payments and receive electronically registered documents and certificates, all without leaving their homes or offices. Today, we are launching the first phase of this system which focuses on starting a business, while the work has already started on phase two, which will encompass the post-registration process. The benefits to both users and the government include cost efficiencies, increased speed of completing transactions, and accessibility to and availability of information, all calculated to improve our global competitive rating. As we launch this first phase, I reaffirm my ministry's commitment to building the strength and capacity of the public sector by engaging in continuous improvement of our IT infra infrastructure and by employing the digital tools that allow us to be more efficient and to garner greater results. But we are going to go further. We will continue monit continually monitor and review how our citizens use these digital services and constantly improve and evolve our systems to ensure that doing business with Kaipo and with the entire ministry, it's not only convenient, but fast, agile, and transparent for all those utilizing the services of the ministry at all times. So I want to close by thanking all those who made today a reality, the main players, of course, being Ernst & Young, the Ministry of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology, and of course, Skypo itself. We see today as the start of great things. I thank you. We thank the Honorable Ronald Toppin, Minister of International Business and Industry for his remarks. And certainly I can say that the pleasure which he has at today's occasion is also shared very much by the acting registrar and staff at Kaipo. And on that note, I therefore invite Mrs. Tamisha Rochester to give her remarks on behalf of corporate affairs and intellectual property. Madam Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Motley, the Honorable Ronald Toppin, Minister of International Business and Industry, Senator the Honorable Kay McConney, Minister of Innovation, Science and Smart Technology, Permanent Secretaries, Heads of Departments, Specially Invited Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. I don't want to sound repetitive, but I also am very, very, very <laughs> pleased today. The minister actually took my line. I was going to start with that, you know. But indeed, I am very pleased to see that we have reached this stage today. And as we heard from the minister this morning, the vision for having this digital corporate registry system began with a strategy to fast track and improve processes and make it easier for companies, businesses, and individuals to interface with us at Kaipo in an efficient and convenient manner. We started the journey towards implementing a full digital platform for doing business, and today the first part of that journey is being realized. 
The digital system is the portal by which investors and businesses, both domestic and external, will be able to navigate their way through the relevant business processes. When we started our quest for a new and improved way of doing things, we took the advice and directives of our honorable prime minister. She told us to deconstruct and reconstruct break down the existing processes, find the problems, find the inefficiencies, and re-engineer the processes in a way that they are, they are as efficient and fit for purpose as possible. In doing this exercise, we took into account the suggestions, feedbacks, and the complaints of the business sector whom we serve, along with those of our staff who also play critical roles in the processes. Under the leader of our minister, the Honorable Ronald Toppin, we were able to outline our vision for a digital corporate registry with a high degree of automation to eliminate many steps in the processes and with the capability to support the issuance of electronic certificates with the relevant security features built in and also to allow for the automatic exchange of information with other government departments. Over the past few months, we have worked very closely with the team from Ernst & Young and from the Ministry of Innovation, Science, and Smart Technology to make today possible. As we launch this first phase of the project, I wish to take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to all persons who were involved in the processes. It was a tremendous effort, and I am proud that we have reached this milestone today. I myself would have witnessed the many emails being sent at 2 a.m., midnight. The teams worked very hard and tirelessly around the clock um, to, to really get the project going and to bypass some of the issues, the technical problems, etc., that would have come up during the, that phase. So I thank them all very much. Our stakeholders have also stood by us and figuratively held our hands, sometimes literally as well, they provided valuable suggestions and feedback, and they also encouraged us. And it is with this spirit of partnership that I ask our stakeholders to continue to give us that level of support and to continue to work with us, as our ultimate goal is to provide a standard of service to you that is second to none. I laud the government of Barbados for recognizing the need to shift from our dependency on paper documents and files and fax machines towards the use of email and the internet and IT platforms. They have recognized and committed to a dynamic, resourceful, and resilient public service, which is efficient and better equipped to evaluate, lead, and implement subsequent digitalization reforms to meet the needs of the public. What is more important than any server, app, program, or system in the cloud is our ability to continually learn about the technological advances being made worldwide and our commitment to apply this knowledge and use these technologies to solve problems for our businesses and our people. It is in this vein that I also applaud the efforts to equip all public servants with the digital skills required to lead and work in modern organizations. Having the right digital skills must be at the forefront of our minds at all times as we continue to transition to this new way of doing business. I must say that over the past few months, the staff of the Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office have embraced this system. Not only were they involved in the planning and design and in the technical meetings, but they made significant contributions, especially when we embarked on our first user acceptance testing phase. Interacting with the system ignited a desire to gain new skills. And it was clear that the digital challenge that some may have thought they were facing became less daunting, especially for the more mature of our workforce when they were able to interface with and make contributions to the new system. In fact, we had the development team um, identify some of our staff members as super users because of how quickly they were able to adapt to and grasp the new system. So this brings us to, the, to today where we are launching phase one, which covers all of the services for starting a new entity 
such as registering business names, incorporating companies, and registering charities and external companies. You may ask why we have gone ahead to launch in a phased process without the full suite of services. Well, we have identified these services as the most critical ones, and we took an agile approach where, as these services are developed and completed, they are put into operation so that persons can reap the maximum benefits from the system as soon as they possibly can. As I close, I wish to iterate that this is only a part of what we are doing as we become a more modern, productive, and resourceful organization. Hand in hand with this digital transformation is the ongoing review of the legislation that governs our activities. Again, an exercise in which our valued stakeholders are playing an important role. On our intellectual property side of the office, we are working with the World Intellectual Property Office, or WIPO, to upgrade the current system, what is called IPAS, to a far more advanced system that will improve the overall service delivery. I will end by reaffirming our commitment to improving our services in line with the changing needs and expectations of the persons and the businesses whom we serve. We will continually pursue more agile ways of working to produce more efficient organizational outcomes so as to ensure that the experience when interacting with our office is at a minimum on par with global standards. Again, I wish to express my deep pleasure that we have made it to this point and to, to let you know that we are working hard and we will continue to adapt, to implement, to listen to the views of our stakeholders and make sure that we are on the cutting edge as a corporate registry. I thank you. Thank you to Mrs. Rochester for her remarks on behalf of Kaipo. I do hope that the Prime Minister has taken heart that Kaipo has not only heeded her charge with respect to modernizing the processes at Kaipo, but that we have been actively doing so and that we have been able to come to such a point that we can say that we are executing your vision. But this task cannot be achieved without many players, as highlighted by Mrs. Rochester. And therefore, we now invite one of our valued partners, Ernst and Young, to give their remarks. Madam Prime Minister, good morning, and all protocols observed. It is also my pleasure, I'll continue the theme, <laughs> to be here, but I think um, I have other motives as well because we can get some sleep <laughs> after the launch, so looking forward to that, but it is my distinct pleasure to be here this morning to represent EY in my newly expanded role as the country managing partner for Barbados office. Since my Cave Hill days, a lot has changed. But without a doubt, COVID-19 has proved to be the biggest global disruptor to people's lives since the end of World War II. In the space of just a few months, we've had to change the way we work, live, play, shop, and interact. Public and private sector organizations had an abrupt awakening as they found themselves having to control a pandemic, shift employees to remote working, find alternative ways to deliver services, and administer large-scale financial support to keep citizens and businesses afloat. This is no slight task for any small island state, but I have been heartened by the resilience displayed by the Barbados government, the business sector, and the wider community at large. 
The digitization of Kaipo's processes is an essential part of these modernization plans. And with the government's support, we are here today. Phase one, as you will see, it will offer the first set of digitized processes mainly related to the registration and reservation of business names, the incorporation of companies and certain supporting functionalities such as the ability to pay online. The volumes that Kaipo manually managed is quite a feat, but automation will undoubtedly improve the levels of customer service and turnaround times, bring better control and accountability, improve the ease of doing business and increase Barbados's attractiveness. Not that I don't think you're beautiful now. <laughs> and establish an infrastructure for growth. This, ladies and gentlemen, is progress. At EY, we truly value the opportunity to support this transformational undertaking. And the close collaboration, and close collaboration was, a criti was critical in bringing this first phase to fruition. In the time allocated, it's impossible for me to name all the persons involved, but allow me to sincerely thank our Prime Minister, the Honorable Mia Motley, the Honorable Ronald Topping, Senator, the Honorable Kay McConney, retiring Permanent Secretary, Ms. June Chandler, and Permanent Secretaries, Jennifer Hunt and Charlie Brown, as well as the Acting Registrar of the Kaipo Office, Tamisha Rochester. I also recognize and thank the executives and staff of the Ministry of B International Business and Industry, Kaipo and MIST, along with all other supporting committees and personnel. To the EY teams from Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Curacao and India, who worked on this project, thank you for your outstanding teaming and delivery. This project allowed us to demonstrate the power of our firm and what we refer to as One EY which transcends geography and is a state of mind that allows us to operate seamlessly and bring the right teams and solutions and skill sets to build what our clients need. In closing, you're on an unstoppable path. As Barbados continues to embed new technologies, new operating models, new behaviors and mindsets, this could only lead to better outcomes. EY keenly looks ahead to partnering with you in the next phases of this journey. Thank you. Thank you to Mrs. Priya Narang Singh from Ernst & Young for her comments. And we dare say that we wish you and all of your team members that much treasured rest, but um, not for too long because it's only the first stage that we've reached. And certainly there is much further that we have to go. But at this time, now we invite our featured speaker, the Honorable Mia Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, to address us. them kind of things. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Morning. And all protocols observed. Um, if I said that it was pleasure, <laughs> then people would really believe that I have a choir singing from the same hymn sheet. <laughs> but given the notorious nature of that statement, which Minister Toppin would appreciate, I would therefore say that I am fully elated. <laughs> no, seriously, this has been long in coming. And I say long in coming because I asked for us to be able to move to this point as far back as 2007, when I had responsibility for this ministry. And we started to put things in place, and then we lost the government in January 2008. When we came in, we had a series of engagements with the corporate registry and with your predecessor. And we looked at all options, including whether we should outsource 
the functioning of this registry to persons overseas. And I'm here to say that both the acting registrar and the minister made a compelling case that we could make the changes and that we could do the transformation ourselves. And we accepted that it was possible and believed in you to be able to make it happen. So that first and foremost, I want to say thank you because this is a statement of confidence in our capacity to work with partners to make the different changes that are necessary possible. On the 2nd of January last year, in addressing the country, I asked the country to walk on a journey with us to make this country world class. And I said that it wasn't going to happen overnight and that we reckon that seven years was a reasonable time frame for the journey. I still believe it. We didn't know that in less than a few weeks, COVID would literally suck the oxygen out of everything that we were doing. And while last year was the year of angst and nervousness, this year was actually the year of loss. Loss at a personal level for so many, loss at an enterprise level because savings were depleted, loss with respect to entities that just couldn't keep their heads above water anymore. And there's a natural flow to that. But what also became clear, as all of you have said, is that we've learned to live in a digital framework. And human beings are quite capable of adaptation, very resilient. And the things that we took for granted two years ago, we now do differently. The irony was that this process was decided before then. And had it not been decided before then, God knows where we would be now. So that we are very grateful that the trajectory upon which we are embarked remains sound and appropriate because it has put us in the right place at the right time when necessary. And this morning, therefore, is the output of significant work on the part of all persons and stakeholders. Minister Toppin has already told us how difficult his life has been with the complaints from stakeholders. I perhaps can echo that too. And therefore, when I met with Ernst & Young last week, I said the only thing I would like from you is to go live and to have the launch. And hence, we are here today. Today is my father's birthday, so that it is an even more special day for me to be here and to believe that this is just but one step in that process. And why do I say so? Yes, you have to finish phase two, which for most 90% of the people using corporate registry is not their concern. So what we are doing this morning is for the majority of people who use the corporate registry. What most Barbadians don't know is that the corporate registry manages over 30 pieces of legislation with respect to how it interacts with the public and stakeholders. And I have gone on record in saying that it was not by accident that I put Minister Ronald Toppin in this ministry. I know of no other minister since independence who has been more diligent with respect to the management of complex drafting and policy instruments than Ronald Toppin. And I say so without fear of contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you know that I'm not saying this for a vote because he's not catching votes the more. <laughs> but seriously, and forgive me for two minutes, because to put in place all of the legislation that was necessary for the beginning of the creation of the new economy with the Fair Trading Commission, consumer complaints, um, utilities regulation, telecommunications, and many, many more that I probably can't remember. And then to have the responsibility as Ben Arundel, who has been a Trojan as well in the battle, can tell you 
that within six months of coming to office on this occasion, to have to put in place with the director, Kevin Hunt, and his team, and the private sector who had done a lot of the work from a policy perspective, but that's a lot different from actually getting in and doing the heavy lifting, clause by clause by clause by clause, and I know as a former Attorney General. So that to have to move 14 pieces of legislation in less than six months with the complexity that it had is a significant achievement. And Minister, I believe now that the Ministry of Finance has now to reward you with a dedicated draftsman, for the <laughs> a dedicated draftsman, so that your record can be even more complete, <laughs> especially as it relates to the Companies Act um, and a number of other pieces of legislation which, quite frankly, the problem with Barbados is that we believe that we can continue to ride on past glory. Uh, and this is one of the deep cultural changes that we have to manage. I spoke about it last night with Future Barbados. You're going to hear me speaking about it over and over. Because that is going to determine whether we can earn our way in this world or not and earn the foreign exchange that is so critical to keep our heads above water. So that a piece of legislation, magnificent as it was when it was passed, modern as it was in the early 80s, but I left primary school, not primary school, secondary school in 83. And I have a lot of gray hair now. <laughs> so that a significant amount of time has passed. And as I said to Tamisha, the process must be anchored always by a simple framework. What is the public purpose we are trying to serve? What is the public mischief that we need to avoid? Can technology help us do what we're doing in a more efficient and effective way? And who will be the people affected? In other words, who will be empowered and who will be disenfranchised from the actions that we're doing? And I'm going to repeat this until there's no more breath in my body. Because I'm satisfied that if everyone takes that approach, not just in the public sector, but you can take out the words public in your own other business or NGO or whatever. But there must be a continual reminder of why are we doing what we are doing. Because if we don't ask ourselves that, we are liable to be serving a purpose that is past or that is useless. And that is not why we are here. This corporate registry, more than any other, is a facilitator, is an enabler. Our duty is to make it happen. Our duty is to be able to tell people how to do things in the way that is expected, but not to bar them from doing it. So no is not an answer that is applicable to either you or the town planning department without explaining to people, how can I reach yes? How can I have conditional approval? And conditional approval is something that I want to be able to reinforce because it's a, it's a culture change. Ben, you will recall that in the same 2007 when I last served in this ministry, tops that you have, that I went back to my days because I had stopped being in charge of immigration at the time. And I asked the immigration department, one of the major complaints was the length of time taken to get short-term work permits. I don't know how many people remember. And the long-term ones for the international business sector. And what we did was to shift the burden of proof. Because at the end of the day, who best knows what you have in your background, who best can swear to it? And if we don't trust people, then fundamentally, we're going to always have a longer and larger problem, a larger problem and a longer process. And what we said, look, we believe that the majority of people are honest. Let us 
capitalize on the virtue of trust. And if we shift the burden of proof to that person, then let that person attest and swear to what we need from them to satisfy the public purpose and to avoid any mischief or fraud that might otherwise attend. We have the ability to do the deep dive on due diligence, but it may take longer than just simply what we set up for Cricket World Cup, which is the framework for the Joint Regional Communication Center, which ties us into Interpol and to the Department of Homeland Security. But in financial crime issues, you may have to do deeper dives that are not immediately available. If at the end of the day, after we have given you that conditional approval, we find out two weeks, four weeks, six weeks from now, two months from now, that what you have sworn is untrue, the legislation says you must now show cause why your permissions should not be revoked. And it is a simple, simple mechanism that uses a shifting of the burden of proof in law to be able to facilitate progress and smooth transition. I share this example with you because I don't believe that we are omnipotent or omniscient at all. And what I want to see within the civil service now and the regulatory agencies is that kind of can-do attitude or the attitude that we have in, we've done the same thing in the new planning legislation which cabinet agreed yesterday to proclaim, um, I think from the December 1st, the December 1st, no? And that is, how do we make things happen? How do we give people a sense of, this is what your path should be to secure approval? Rather than a person wondering, if I do this, they're gonna agree, or if I do this, they're gonna agree, that is a loss of time and energy that this economy does not have the luxury of being able to lose. And that what we therefore require is a pathway that gives people certainty, advice that is transparent to all, but above all else, with a smile in our hearts, the capacity to say, together, yes, we can. Why? Because we have enough battles fighting on the outside and we don't need any more battles on the inside. And part and parcel of this journey to the Republic, Parliamentary Republic, is to be able to create the confidence that we can deconstruct and that we can reconstruct and that we can guide and regulate our own affairs with respect to being anchored in sound principles that have come from that deconstruction and that understanding of what is it we really want to do. And I really hope that that can-do attitude, that that sense of empowering and facilitating citizens can happen. Because at the same time, the Charter is asking the citizens to be active now in their citizenship. And therefore, between active citizens and an empowering regulatory framework to provide services for citizens, we will hopefully see a new experience in Barbados and a new mindset. And that is simply what this is about. I wish it was as easy as putting bricks on top of each other so that you could see in a tangible way. But because it is intangible, it is a little more difficult to achieve, but it is not impossible. Last night I told the youngsters in Future Barbados that it is difficult, yes, to change a culture, but it is not impossible. And I want us, whether it is in the welfare department the Corporate Affairs Department, the Immigration Department, which has already seen significant changes with how they deal with the people and you have to give Jack the jacket. Congratulations to the Immigration Department. Whether it is in any department of government, put yourself in the position of the person who you are serving. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. A song simple, but it is the most important, the most important act for every one of us who is serving the public, from political to public servant. We don't know what that person had to do to get before us. We don't know 
whether they are in a position where their health allowed them easily to be before us. We don't know if it is the last money they spent on buses or taxi to get down to be before you. And therefore, if it is, and I'll share one thing with you. When I came into political representation, and Ronald, you would appreciate this, people come to you at all times of day and night. And you had to change your mindset from the beginning because it is very easy to say, well, I want some time for myself. And I realize it takes me two minutes to listen. Two minutes. And immediately you make the judgment. Is this something I can deal with now? Or is this something that I need to set a time for this person to come back to me or for me to call back this person? And that is the guiding principle. There's no magic about it. It's just about seeing people, hearing people, and caring about people. And I could have come here this morning and given a very complex speech on the modernization of the economy and all of this, and all that matters, yes, it does. But what matters more is anchoring the technology that we have now just done here, the technological transformation with the human spirit of can do. And if we can do that, Tamisha, and if you can get your registry working in a seamless way as one, and if we can start to think about how better to empower you, and you know I've said that to you all, and I'm prepared for the government to consider going there, then I believe that we can be world class, while at the same time ensuring that your staff are proud, happy, and content. And I hope that that is the kind of marriage that we will see now happening. Because technological transformation, without the transformation of either the policy and the legislation, and without the transformation of the human element, will not mean anything. This is as good as the people who use it on both sides, and it is as strong as the legislation and the policy allows it to be underpinning. So we are happy to be here, but we are conscious that this is just but one element of what will drive success for us to be world class. The last point I make is that this sector in business, and we made the point that for us, all local business is global, and all global business is local. And why? Because we must be world class in our service delivery regardless of who we are dealing with. And I hope that that recognition will also mean that Barbadians will begin to understand that we too have to engage the world in different ways. And we have to do that by mastering first at home. So what are the things that would cause the coconut vendors out there now? to decide that, oh, I don't want to register a business name because a business name still leaves me liable. So let me have a limited liability company like anybody else. And is there not a case now for us reviewing at some point, how do we make it easier for the average Barbadian to be able to incorporate? How do we make it easier for the average Barbadian to understand, and that is um, how, how business works, and that is why the, the financial literacy program is so critical to this government, because we have to have the capacity to be able to pool financial resources and to foster trust so that we can build enterprises together. Eric Williams used to say, half a loaf is better than no loaf at all. And that was a recognition that whether it is through cooperatives or credit unions or um, companies, that building and working together even if it means that I benefit only from a portion of it, is better if the success is going to be there. It's no sense me doing it alone or failing. I have no track record. And one of the key elements within this framework is understanding how companies and co-ops work in order to facilitate that mutual interest and pursuit of profit and progress. So the work is ahead of us. I'm not going to keep you any longer this morning, but suffice it to say that this is a necessary step in the relay to achieve success and to break
to make Barbadian service delivery within the business sector world class. And never, never, never should we continue to rest on our laurels. Be proud of what we have achieved, but be conscious that there's always somebody or something on our heels that requires us to be ever vigilant because this is a competitive world. And if we are going to be the best in class, then we need to make sure that we are vigilant, creative, and disciplined, but above all else, conscious of the people whom we serve. Thank you, and God bless, and congratulations truly, truly, truly to Ernst & Young, and in particular to the staff of the Corporate Affairs Department in whom we have now placed our greatest trust. Thank you. Thank you for such an inspiring and um, uplifting uh, feature address, uh, Prime Minister Motley. Certainly must say thanks as well for the confidence that you have placed in Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office. And I do hope that we continue to do right by that confidence that you have placed within our organization. At this time, we will have the filing um, by the Prime Minister of Yes, the filing of the first um, name registration uh, utilizing you the know, new I'm system. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just turn your attention to the screen, um, we're seeing in real time as the Prime Minister um, struggles with us. <laughs> no, 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 ma'am. This, this is a real demonstration for the av of what it is going to be like for the average person. <laughs>
So what you're seeing right now is that Prime Minister Motley is currently logging in with her username and password. Um, and she's in. <laughs> So we are now looking at the dashboard, which you meet once you are in the system. And from there, you can select the, the service which you <laughs> the service which you wish to conduct. Set the forward button. Just set the forward button as if it will take you back to the dashboard. Once you've selected the service, it is that you want, um, you're prompted to fill in certain information on the page. Um, in this instance, um, the information has been pre-populated, but um, if you were doing it on your own, you would have to fill in the relevant information.
As we would have just seen, although quite briefly the message came up, the application would have been accepted. And from the interface, if you want to, you can always print off a copy of, of, the, app, of the application for your personal records, because we're not dealing with paper. But if you want to have that paper, you have that option of printing from the page. And once registered, once the application is filed, you also receive confirmation of that via the email address that you would have provided on the application form. Now, as you may have noticed on the screen, there were a couple areas, a couple messages in red, and those would be, you know, prompts where information may not have been um, accurate or may have been incomplete, or um, just reminders, um, one of which was that you have to be 18 years or older in order to um, register uh, the business name. So we're now at the payment process, and we're using the government easy pay um, system. Just kindly note that this is this is a fake credit card. This is not the Prime Minister's <laughs> personal information being put out there. So do not um, <laughs> attempt to use this anywhere else. <laughs> and the payment has has and if it had a mark, it would have been submitted in three minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for the demonstration. As you can see, anyone can do it from anywhere, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a Mac computer. Any computer <laughs> can, can, can work. Um, but in any event, we also do have here at Kaipo two stations um, that are available to the public uh, for persons to use from uh, at the office itself. And the benefit of that, obviously, if you're coming to Kaipo to do it here on the computer, is that if you need the assistance with it, you do have um, officers here who would be able to assist you uh, as you go through the process. We move now to <clears throat> that part of any program which signals the beginning of the end, and we invite Mrs. Miss Tricia Beckles, Acting Deputy Registrar at Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property, to move the vote of thanks. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. All. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies, all protocols observed. It gives me immense pleasure to have been asked to extend the vote of thanks on such a momentous occasion. Today's launch of Kaipo's digitalization project, sorry, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Today's launch of Kaipo's digitalization project symbol of transition to digital transformation is the re realization of a long-held vision and the reward for years of dedicated work. First, we must say that it is indeed an honor to have the Honorable Prime Minister, Mia Amor Motley, grace us with her presence today. Your support for the vision of Kaipo and champion of this cause is in keeping with your vision 
of Kaipo, sorry, is in keeping with your vision for making this country world class. Delivering the featured address and all, and all that was stated therein demonstrates the importance that this nation places on its commitment to reform the way we do business. On behalf of everyone here and those attending virtually, we want to express our heartfelt gratitude to you, Honorable Prime Minister. Sincere gratitude is expressed to the Honorable Minister of the Ministry of International Business and Industry, Mr. Ronald Topping, MP, who has been instrumental in making this a reality, and to the Acting Permanent Secretary, to whom the baton has been passed. We wish to also thank the former Permanent Secretary in, in our parent ministry, Ms. June Chandler, for her indelible contribution to this project. We wish her all the best transitioning into a new phase of life. We recognize other members of the ministry's team, particularly Mr. Kevin Hunt, Director of the International Business Unit, and we are grateful for your unwavering support and helping to ensure that this project was a success. Thank you. This project could not have been possible without the technical assistance of two agencies. The team from the Ministry of Innovation, Science, Smart Technology, MIST, and the Ernst and Young team, EY. The MIST, to the MIST team, we thank you for the technical support you provided for the integration of external features such as Easy Pay, to, to the Honorable Minister, Senator Kay McConney, Permanent Secretary, Mr. Charlie Brown, who's not here today, Ovin Herewood, Heather Gibson, Terence Thompson, Andrea Walker, and the entire Miss team. We shall ever remain grateful to you. To the other significant player in this project, our partner, Ernst Sanyang, Young, we would like to express our sincerest thanks, particularly to the EY India team, who worked assiduously to ensure that this state-of-the-art digital platform is operational. The distance in time zones and the physical distance between our countries was a non-factor, as they were both conquered by technology. This co collaboration is only but a perfect example of what this project can allow Kaipo to do, that is, removing barriers such as physical distance and time, time zones, which, which will no doubt improve the ease of doing business in Barbados. Thank you. To the Registrar, Tamisha Rochester, words cannot express the gratitude we have for you. Even before stepping into the role of registrar, you have been vocal and passionate about the need to modernize Kaipo, your knowledge, commitment, hard work, long hours, and most importantly, <laughs> and most importantly, your vision are very much acknowledged and appreciated. We, the staff, share in your triumph, and we pledge our continued support as you lead the charge of the modernization of Kaipo. With that being said, I wish to address my fellow colleagues. Special thanks to the staff who welcomed this initiative and was instrumental in ensuring that we present an efficient sub, um, system to the public. Thank you for your input and commitment. Thank you to the organizational, technical, Mr. Alfred Taylor, <laughs> and administrative staff, whose unwavering dedication behind the scenes ensured that this event met, if not surpassed the excellent standard to which we have become accustomed. And of course, we must mention our deep sense of appreciation to our many external stakeholders 
too numerous to mention, who took time out of their busy schedules to attend testing sessions and to provide invaluable feedback. As users of the system, your feedback is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your contribution. And of course, to the Master of Ceremonies, who ensured the smooth execution of today's event, accept our gratitude. Finally, on behalf of the Ministry of International Business and Industry and Corporate, and Corporate Affairs and Intellectual Property Office, to all our specially invited guests, the media, those attending virtually, it has certainly been a pleasure to share this event with you. We encourage you to visit our website at kaipo.gov.bb for instructional videos and help desk services to help you navigate our new system. We thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I proceed, I just wish to share uh, some good news. The certificate from the Prime Minister's um, application has already been generated. So I guess you, may, um, PM, you may be invited to collect it from downstairs <laughs> <laughs> on your way up. <laughs> Just at one time you would collect it from downstairs, but now you download it. So I would just <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> What you're seeing on this screen right now is the dashboard which shows the which shows the current status of the application and the certificate. Just to amplify what is being said, um, at the bottom of the certificate, you will notice that there's a QR code which is on the certificate, and each QR code would be unique to each certifi certificate. And that QR code allows any other individual who wishes to verify the authenticity of the document to do so. Okay. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of this, the launch of the first phase of the digitization process. Um, and you may leave, but I ask kindly that you remain seated so that the Prime Minister and her entourage may take their leave first. <laughs> 